Hello there, friends. Welcome back. In this video, let's do something a little different. Let's go for a little walk. Today we're going to head outside and visit a few covered bridges. We'll visit four of them today. These are covered wooden bridges out on small rural county roads. These four bridges have some interesting things in common. For example, they were all built by the same company the same family of builders called the Kennedys. All four of these bridges are built in the same county and all four of them cross the same waterway. And all four of them were built with the same basic truss style called the Burr Arch Truss. And you can probably see right away which part of this truss is the burr arch. It's rather distinctive as the only curved piece of, uh, of the structure. And it kind of defines the span All four of these bridges are still open to traffic, which is notable, as several of these old bridges have been bypassed by more modern structures. There have been as many as 600 covered bridges built in the state I live in, but only 90 or so are still standing. So we'll tour these four today and see if we can get a sense, a sense of them, a sense of the, the history, of the presence of these structures. The one we're visiting now is called the Norris Ford Bridge. It's about 167 feet long, and it was built in 1916, toward the end of this family's construction history. I think I've read that this bridge is the next to the last bridge 
that they built. You'll see a, a fair share of graffiti, of course, in, in all of these old bridges, unfortunately, and the first two that we look at today are probably the worst. The timbers inside these bridges are somewhat arresting with their uh, size and their their weight, the just the gravity of the structure. And it's always traditional to poke one's head out the side openings and take a look at the trees and the river below. can look up and get a sense of the height of the inside of this bridge and a little bit of a sense of the roof. The only reason these bridges were covered at all was to protect the the structural timbers and the timbers of the deck from the weather, covering them with a roof and putting sides on the bridge increased the lifespan considerably. This is a construct that wasn't needed with iron bridges later, of course. Most of the bridges in this state are built with this burr arch truss design. And if you look closely at the very top of the arch in this bridge, you will see the maker's name. It says Kennedy and Sons Builders, 1916. Even though all four of the bridges today in this video were built by the same family, this is the only bridge that has that family builder's mark at the top of the arch. Maybe we can think of that as the Kennedy's own graffiti, the original graffiti. I love paying particular attention to the deck of these old bridges, like this one we see here. Think about all the traffic and all the different types of traffic that has traveled across this deck over the years from foot to horse, to car. Oh, if those bridges could only speak. Now 
now we'll approach the second bridge on our little tour today. This bridge is a little more exposed than the first bridge. It's not quite as densely surrounded by trees. There's an open field on the far side of this bridge, opposite our approach. This is the shortest and the oldest of the bridges that we'll visit today. This is called the Smith Bridge, built by the Kennedys in 1877, and it's only 136 feet long. You see that distinctive scroll work on the left and right sides of the opening. This bridge and the following two have that. And of course, again, that burr arch truss is so distinctive when you get inside these bridges. One interesting thing about this little bridge is that it is posted at a three-ton capacity. Three-ton maximum weight. The first bridge we looked at and all of the other bridges are 10 ton bridges. I believe that there are modern reinforcement techniques that can be done to these old bridges to increase their carrying capacity to accommodate, of course, heavy vehicles of today. But I believe this bridge has not had those reinforcements done, and the three-ton capacity is probably its original capacity. can see some damage to some of the uh, planks on this side of the bridge that could easily be caused by a uh, height issue with a vehicle going through. You know, this video, this tour, could be much, much shorter than it is. It could have just taken one quick pass through each bridge and and called it a day, but when I'm actually in these bridges, when I visit them in person, it's definitely not a race. I don't just drive through a bridge and continue on my way, or I don't just get out of the car and 
walk the length of a bridge once and then get back in the car and drive on. When I'm in a space like this, I always make a point to spend some time because I find them to be very meditative spaces, very contemplative spaces. There's something about slowly walking the deck, exploring the timbers, slowing the mind down as I watch the geometry glide by, watching the combination of straight lines and curved lines pass through my vision. It's a very transportative experience and not something that I'm interested in hurrying along. There's something about these spaces that just make me feel connected to another time. And there's also something undeniably artistic to be standing, walking through essentially a sculpture, architectural sculpture by the Kennedys. When you think about artists signing their work, like paintings, pottery, perhaps. Then you have a, a construction like this with the builder's name right there on the end. It's very easy for me to think of this as art as well. Art that you can walk through art that is as much space as it is construction, and you can move through that space and wonder at the just the size of it and the and how solid everything is, and yet how fragile it is at the same time, how easily destroyed something like this could be despite its size, despite its deceptive level of permanence. We mustn't be tricked just because this bridge has been here since 1877 does not mean it couldn't go away tomorrow as the result of an accident or carelessness or arson, deliberate mischief. As we look up to the roof of this bridge. This is why these visits for me are never hurried, 
because this is the kind of place that my mind goes when I get to walk one of these bridges. Let's take a look at bridge number three. One thing I love is a good reveal, a good approach. And this bridge has perhaps the best approach that we're seeing now because of this curved road. You get to come around the curve and the bridge reveals itself to us. This is perhaps the best looking example of a single span burr arch truss bridge that we'll see. It's just so well kept. This is the Forsyth Bridge, or also known as the Forsyth Mill Bridge. Built in 1888 by the Kennedys, and it's about 197 feet long. But what you might notice compared to the first two bridges is that this bridge has been uh, cleaned, I suppose would be the word, of a lot of its graffiti recently. That doesn't mean that it's completely devoid of graffiti, of course, but many of the timbers inside this bridge have evidence of being scraped by perhaps some sort of a wire brush tool all of the places that are packed with graffiti and the other bridges are relatively clear of it in this bridge. I suspect that they have to do that from time to time. Well, they don't have to, but I suppose if it's a priority to the local community, and if they have the funding, they'll spend a little time trying to clean these bridges up a little bit. But the result is a very nice looking interior here at the Foresight Mill Bridge. It's just a handsome, handsome bridge. In a lovely rural setting. In this location, we can hear some children playing in the river in the distance, which I found to be fairly charming when I was here at the bridge. 
because in this day of electronic distractions, it's very easy when you hear the laughter of children playing in a river to imagine that exact same sound, that exact same recreation happening, say, in 1888, on the day this bridge was dedicated. It adds to the time machine aspect of this place, I suppose. We can see the river is quite brown and muddy here, but the sounds of the water contribute to the ambiance of a covered bridge experience. One of the things that differentiates, you know, a, uh, a nice painting or photograph of a covered bridge from visiting the real thing is the fact that a bridge is always over water. And so when you're at the bridge, you always have water as part of the soundtrack of that experience. They go hand in hand. These bridges are such a contrast between light and dark. They're so relatively dark on the inside, but so bright at the ends. It's particularly notable when you're in there with a camera. Walking the deck of the covered bridge, shiny with the wear and the use from modern vehicles. These decks do generally have to be replaced from time to time, or at least I assume they did when they saw a lot more traffic. I've seen some bridges where communities have built up the, the two strips of the deck where the car tires would go with an extra board so that the extra board would take the wear of the tires and not the deck of the bridge itself. None of these Kennedy bridges have that feature, but I've seen that done as a way to protect the deck. Beautiful day at the Forsyth Mill Bridge. Now we approach our final bridge. And there are some differences with this bridge that I hope you'll notice. 
if you've been paying attention to the other three bridges. I hope you'll notice some very distinct differences with this bridge. This is the only bridge that, where we get a, a decent view of the side of the bridge, for one thing. And you'll notice an abutment out in the middle of the river. That should give you a bit of a clue of one of the differences here. This is a much longer bridge than the other three we looked at. This bridge is 333 feet long. This is called the Moscow Bridge, named after the very, very small community that it's part of. And the other big difference can be seen here at the front of the bridge. Dan R. Cullum and Sons, 2010. This bridge was destroyed in early June, 2008 when an F3 tornado came through the area and literally sucked the span right off the abutments and cast it down into the river below. So the bridge was rebuilt using, from what I've read, about 40% of the original timbers that were salvageable. And it was finished and rededicated in 2010. And you probably notice, looking down the length of this bridge, the other big difference. It's due to its length. This is a double span bridge. There are two sets of burr arch trusses in this bridge. So if you like the arch, you have twice as much of it here. One second. I think we have some traffic. Well, that was a fairly amazing bit of timing. As a local member of the Amish community came through with horse and buggy. You couldn't tell this in the video, of course, but at the moment the horse went by me at its closest point. You could feel the sympathetic movement of the bridge deck underfoot. I'm not talking about sharp, sudden vibrations caused by 
the horse's hooves. I mean a much more fundamental up and down movement of the bridge as it reacted to the weight, the natural gait of the horse. It was, uh, you know, if we talk about, if we talk about the time machine aspect of a bridge like this, you know, originally built in 1886, what could be better? What could add to that experience more than seeing a horse and buggy travel through while while we're there? We were amazingly lucky. This bridge has a few plaques installed in it related to the reconstruction and the rededication of the bridge in 2010. I thought that it might be easy to tell which of the timbers were original from the Kennedy construction and which were new from the rebuild, but I was wrong about that. And you can perhaps see the same thing from this video, that when you're inside, it all looks perfectly perfectly um, suitable, perfectly matched. It, it looks like every one of those timbers has been there since the 1800s. They did such a good job of rebuilding the bridge in the way that the Kennedy family built bridges. All the posts, all the braces, the arch, itself, all four of them now, the deck, if you didn't know the story of this bridge, if you didn't see the modern date inscribed on the outside, I, I really doubt that there would be much to tip us off that anything had happened to this bridge at all. Nothing to give us a clue that every one of these timbers hasn't been standing here since 1888. 1886. My apologies. The devil's in the details, is he not? I wonder if you have any historic bridges where you live. I'll bet you do. Although, It is a challenge, from what I've read, lobbying for the preservation of some of these historic structures, particularly the non 
wooden variety. I understand that there's a bit of a bias towards wooden historical structures and that iron bridges are not quite given the same credence, that it might be more tempting to justify from a state's perspective or a government's perspective to simply replace an iron bridge with a more contemporary structure rather than preserving it versus what is done for covered wooden structures. I admit that even I have visited more wooden bridges than I have historic iron bridges, even though I believe I appreciate them both equally. But that is a mistake I need to rectify in the future. Perhaps if I can educate myself a little bit more on historic iron bridges in my state, maybe that would be a good topic for a second walking tour video. You can see the river is its widest and noisiest here at the Moscow Bridge. We've been traveling from the northeast to the southwest as we tour through these four bridges and the river gets wider and wider as we go. Hence the need for the double span bridge here in Moscow. It's an amazing structure. The fact that it had to be rebuilt takes nothing away from it. It's just as impressive. And I hope you have been able to get just a little bit of the flavor through this video of visiting bridges like this in person. It's really, if you like this sort of thing, it's really an amazing experience and I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care of yourself, friends. See you next time.